Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we appreciate your mercy. We appreciate your kindness. We appreciate your love. Father, we thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for the salvation of our souls. We thank you for the testimonies, for the wonders, for the miracles that are in the midst of the chosen. May all glory, may all honor, may all worship, and all adoration be ascribed unto thee. Daddy, you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. Lord, we depend on you because you are dependable. We look up unto heaven asking you, O God, have your way in the midst of your people. Whatever you have done in the life of those that testify, Father, we believe that you shall do greater things today. Or we are asking you, Father, as we make ourselves available before you today, Lord, work on us. Father, make us Christ-like in every area of our lives. So that when the trumpet shall sound, each and every one of us will make rapture in Jesus' name. And I pray that every plant you have not planted in our lives, in the midst of your people, I command those plants to be uprooted in Jesus' name. Lord, I soak here with the blood of Jesus, and I come against every contrary spirit, every marine spirit, witchcraft spirit, antichrist spirit, all the fallen angels, Satan, demons, I bind them, I bind their power, I cast them to abyss in Jesus' name. Lord, I lose your power, your power to save, your power to deliver, your power to bless, your power to teach your word, to preach your word. Let your power come upon the church in Jesus' name. Daddy, I pray, have your way. Bless your people. All I'm asking you this day, open our eyes of understanding. I pray that give us grace to serve you and to serve you alone. So that, O oh Lord, each and every one of us will become candidate of heaven in Jesus' name. I cover here with the Lord of Jesus. I pray take over. Holy Ghost take over. In Jesus' powerful name we pray. And amen. Shall we get seated? Turn your Bible to Matthew chapter 6 from verse 24. Matthew chapter 6 from verse 24. No man can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat, or what you shall drink, neither yet for your body. What you shall put on is not the life more than meat, and the body than raiment. First Timothy chapter 6, we read verse 10. First Timothy chapter 6, and from verse 10. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some converted after, they have erred from the faith, and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. In John chapter 8, from verse 34, John's Gospel chapter 8, from verse 34, Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committed sin is the servant of sin. And the servant abided not in the house forever, but the son abided ever. In Romans chapter 6, verse 16, Romans chapter 6, we read verse 16, Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourself servant to bear, his servant ye are. To whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death, or of obedience unto righteousness. So from these uh, chapters and verses, we are bringing to you the topic of our message this morning. And we are talking to you on the topic, you cannot serve two masters. You cannot serve two masters. Everyone who is wishing to make heaven at last, 
must listen to this message because the Bible says in Psalm 119, reading verse 30, Psalm 119, verse 30, the entrance of thy world giveth light. He giveth understanding unto the simple. We need the word of God to lighten us in the way we should live our lives so that we will not miss heaven, so that we shall make rapture when the trumpets are sound. Remember, when one is walking in the dark, when one is walking in isolation from the truth, such person is bound to fall. Likewise, those who walk without knowledge are bound to be destroyed. If you look at the book of uh, Hosea chapter 4, and verse 6, Hosea chapter 4, look at your Bible. Hosea chapter 4, verse 6, open your Bible and read verse 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. I want to let you know, let's stop there. People are destroyed for what? Lack of knowledge. If you don't have the knowledge on what you should do, how you should live your Christian life, that person may run in the rest out of order, contrary to the rule, and that person can be destroyed at the end of his life. That's why we need to know the truth. Because the Bible says we shall know the truth, and the truth shall make us free. So everyone should endeavor to listen and learn in order to know, live according to his will, in order to make heaven at last. If you look at John chapter 8 verse 12, John's gospel chapter 8, let's read verse 12. Please open your Bible, John chapter 8 verse 12. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness. But I have the light of life. As we follow Jesus, we shall never stumble, we shall never be destroyed, we shall never miss heaven. But we shall have the life that shall lead us all through to rapture and heaven at last in Jesus' name. So each and every one of us must be guided by the word of God so that we can make it. If you look at your Bible in John chapter 1, I want to read John's Gospel chapter 1 and from verse 1. In the beginning was the world, and the world was with God, and the world was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shined in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. I want to let you know, as we walk in the light of this world, no darkness shall comprehend us. We shall ever remain enlightened in the knowledge of the Lord. So, we must realize that, take note, money and the riches of this life are types of gods or possessions of this life. They are types of gods of this world. And whosoever that give him or herself, instead of herself, to them will be distracted. If you give yourself to these things, honestly, you cannot serve God properly well. You will be distracted. You need to take note of that statement because that will inform the body of our teaching. And so, in this message, we shall consider the following subheadings. One, the reasons and warning. Two, the unfortunate situation and danger. Let's go to point number one, the reasons. And warning. Everyone should know that we are in the very last days. We are in the very last days. In fact, the coming of Jesus is at hand, and the trumpet can sound any time, and nobody knows the time. But the fact is that it is at hand, and all that is happening today shows that it is at hand. If you look at your Bible in Matthew, the book of Matthew, I read chapter 24. Matthew 24. Let's read from verse 7, 24, and from verse 7. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, and pestilences, and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. They shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you. And ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many. 
And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall was good. If you look at what is happening today, you will see that these present day are characterized by all these things, which the Bible says they are the beginning of sorrows. And which are the things that mark the coming of Jesus and the end of the world. And if you look at another place in the Bible, in Second Timothy chapter 3, 2 Timothy chapter 3, please look at your Bible. I read from verse 1. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, dangerous times. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents. Unthankful, unholy, without natural affections, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, territors, heady, high minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, denying the power thereof, from such turn away. If you look at what is happening in the church, in the present day, you will see all these kind of people feed in all the churches from head to the toe. And so many people in these last days does not agree on the power of God to serve, to deliver. Many of them are rather fighting the power of God. Many of them are rather remaining the same. There is no evidence of salvation because they are men, men and women of this last day prophecy. Of those who have a form of godliness but denies the power thereof. And I want to let you know, in these last days, there is a lot of evil going on. And for believers, it is a dangerous time. Dangerous times in the sense that people are giving themselves over to evil as have been at least in this place to rest. A lot of evil are going on. Many things are happening which pose great danger for believers in these last days. Love of money is the order of the day. Covetousness is the order of the day. I want to let you know hardship or famine, economic recession, are the order of the day. Of course, there is a lot of hardship everywhere. There is a famine taking place everywhere. And, um, you know, many world um, economic is falling. The currency is falling. Many nations are going into austerity measure. And then, you know, the exchange rates are falling. In the prophecy of these last days, many of these things the Lord has said uh, through the apostles, through the prophets of old, that these are the things that will be in the last days. Economic recession, farming. Take note of that. And then we talk about pestilences. Of course, you heard of HIV, you heard of cancer, you heard of. Uh, um, you know, high BP and uh, um, diabetes and also of plate you heard of Ebola disease all these things are pestilences that characterize the last days these are the things that mark the fulfillment of the prophecies of the last days and I want to let you know that all these things are bound and they are the order of the day and many have more time no, take note of this point Many people have no more, in fact, no more time. Not that they have more time, they have no more time. Many people, pastors and uh, workers in the church and members in the church, they have no more time for the Word of God. They have no more time to study. They have no more time to, you know, to apply the Word, pray the Word of God into their life and live their life. According to the word of God, many people, they isolate the word of God and do things as they want, as they will. And this is the order of the day. And that's why a lot of evil is going on. Of course, the Bible says these things will happen in the last days. And I, I want you to understand that there is no more true worship in many places that are called church. I say there is no more word. Let me explain it. Now, people go to church this time around just for what they can get from God. I don't know where they are flat upon are making. I say people go to church in order to get healing, deliverance, and miracles, and blessings. And people go to church 
Someone is specially not to listen to the word of God, but they go to church to get what? Blessings. It is not out of order to get blessings. But when you follow after that blessings and miracle, you become nothing, you become vain. The thing that makes you to be, have weight is the word of God. The thing that establishes you and makes you be a strong believer, a disciple, one that can help others to make heaven and make heaven at last, is what? The word of God. And I want to let you know, the reason for our worship unto God is not to get things from Him. The reason is that God created us for that purpose. Are you hearing me? Now, if you look at the book of Revelation chapter 4, verse 11, please open your Bible. I read verse 11. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and we are created. Now, let me tell you, let me explain a little about that verse of the scripture. I want you to understand can you look up? I want you to understand that your vehicle you are driving is not serving you for what they can get. How many of you agree with me? I say your vehicle that takes you to the church is not serving you for what they can get from you. I say how many of us agree? Thank you very much. I want to let you know the air condition in your house or radio or fan, they are not finding you for what they can get from you. It is their responsibility to do what? To serve you. And they must serve you whether, listen to me, whether good or bad, they must do what? Serve you. Their duty on them is to service them. Am I right? That is what the Bible says. And you will serve the Lord and he will bless your bread and waters. He will take away sickness from you. He will take away problem from you. He will take away barrenness, short life. He will take, you know, deal with your enemy. When you serve him, God will service you. Praise the Lord. Now, let me come to this issue of Revelation chapter 4, verse 11. We are all created to worship God. They are not coming to worship God. They are coming because they have one problem or the other. But I want to let you know, if you worship God with in spirit and in truth, you will see God in your life. Those problems that you are looking to solve, God will take care of them because you are doing the pleasure of God. Let me find out from you. The vehicle you have, do, you, do they beg you to service them? Please, somebody should answer me. Do your vehicle beg you to service them? No, you are the one that, ser- that services them because those vehicles or those things, because they are important to you. Because they are doing your pleasure. And therefore, if they need food, you give them what? Answer me. If they need healing, what do you do to them? Assuming that there is any damaged part of the, uh, the vehicle, what do you do? Do they beg you to replace it? Now, I want to let you, if they apply a puncture, is, is, do they beg you to replace it? No, not at all. If the engine is bad, do they beg you to service them? No, not at all. That, is our, that should be our relationship with God. When this relationship is established, honestly, you will serve God with joy and God will take care of you. But anything outside than that, it is serving God and mama. If you are coming to church for healing, for deliverance, for miracle, for money, I want to let you know, when you get money, you will not be in the church again. You will not worship God with all your heart again. When you get healing, you will not worship God with all your heart again. When you get those things you are looking for, you will not worship God with all your heart again. I want to let you know that we should not serve God and mammon. I want to let you know whether you are rich or not rich, whether you are poor or not poor, whether you are healthy or not healthy, you are to serve God. God's duty on you is to service you. Do you agree with me? Huh. I want to let you know so many people that are serving God for money, for healing, for deliverance, they are serving two masters. And it is against the will of God, contrary to the word of God. Are you hearing me? Those things are their masters. You need to search your life. If truly you are converted, any day of fellowship, to show that you are converted, you close that shop an hour before the time of fellowship with God. Did you hear what I'm saying now? Otherwise, they are what? You are masters, and you cannot serve two masters. If you serve two masters, automatically, 
you will please one and despise the other. And that why you are coming late to church is because of what? You despise God and then you love your other master. Let me tell you something. Why you remain in your business till um, you know the hour is past? Why you cannot talk to your, to your director in the place of work that as I'm taking this employment, this day I must go on time, put it in agreement. Because you cannot serve two masters. I don't know whether somebody is hearing me. And this must be the standard for anybody who is heavenly minded, heavenly candidate. Rapturable says, honestly, you cannot serve two masters. If you find that you have made this place as Sunday, Sunday service, then the other master is your master. This one is that you are looked let down God. So you need to search your life. If you are in this place now, and now making money has taken away your time, you don't respond to the things of God again, how you should do. And then you are coming to church, or you are not coming to church at all, at all, or you are coming late in any day of service. The other master is winning, and that's the real master. The other one is despised, and that's God. Or you are coming to church for merchandise, coming for healing, for deliverance, for money, for profit, they are coming for miracles. That's what we are coming to church for. I want to let you know that is coming for merchandise. Whenever you come to church, you are waiting for miracle, for healing, for deliverance. For That's why, in fact, whenever you come to church, you are just listening. Whenever the pastor says, you will buy a car this year, you will say, man. In fact, you will you wake up from sleep. I don't know whether you are the point I am making. You are that person that is doing that is coming for what? Merchandise. You come to do business. So let us serve God without anything in our heart that this is the condition that is attached to it. God created me and you for his pleasure, and for his pleasure we are and we are created. And if you serve him like that, you can never regret it. Because he seek it for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, what happened? And all these things have been added unto. Why you don't get them is because you have not obeyed him. You have not done his will. Jesus that did his will. Jesus, our master, did, that did his will. He said, all things are delivered unto me of my father. How many things? Because he did his will. So, I want to plead with all of us that are coming here. As many of us that wish to make heaven at last. Let's serve God as God. Let's serve Him alone. You can never regret it. Whenever He's exalted, He, he, will, he will bless you. Whenever you exalt Him and put Him first, He will take care of you. There is no two way about it. So, there are so many people coming to church for blessing, for money, and have left the true worship of God. Now, but I want to let you know, whether money or not, such as you know, there is no more time. Christ is coming, and if you, if you are found in that condition, you may not make rapture at all, at all, because you are serving two masters. Did you hear me? That is, this God is faithful, He's righteous, He's good. All of you are giving testimony on what He's doing, even when you are serving Him wrongly. He's still blessing you. How much more when you serve Him righteously, and the right, in, according to His will, in the right way? Don't you think He's going to bless you? Please answer me. He has shown you his faithfulness, his mercy, his compassion, his love. Therefore, let us serve him as God. Let us place him as the first priority. He doesn't need secondary attend in your life. He wants you to serve him, place him first. And if you will serve God like that, oh my God, this God I'm serving is too great. Except you have another God. But this God I'm serving, if you serve him faithfulness, you will see his finger upon your life. Praise the Lord. So, if you look at the Bible, in Matthew chapter 6, verse 24, Matthew chapter 6, verse 24, No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mama. There are so many people today that have valued their business, valued wedding, valued burial, 
valued everything about self above the fellowship with God. Money, the things of this life. In fact, why they are not in service in the church is because they must attend to their business. They must go for burial. They must go for wedding. They must go for, uh, what do you call them? All, everything about this world, they must give his attention. What do they do in such situation? They despise, please, listen to me. What do they do? They despise God. They don't come on time. They don't come. They come only once in a week. They despise God. And such people, the only reason is what? They are serving two masters. Are you among them? Are you claiming to be born again? I want to let you know your claiming cannot qualify you. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 7. Please look at your Bible. Chapter 7, I read verse 21. Not everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the, into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. So, all the people that are deceiving themselves, and then doing what they like, exalting their business, exalting money, exalting the things of this life, exalting barrier, exalting wedding, exalting the things of this above God. And therefore, a person is not going to any heaven. He's deceiving himself. If he's in the church, he has a um, motive. You will seek me and find me. When you shall search for me with all, all your heart. Nobody goes to heaven by accident. I am heaven is a prepared place. For prepared people. You don't go to heaven by chance. Heaven is not by chance. The Bible said in the book of Luke chapter 13 verse 24. Please look at your Bible. Luke chapter 13. Reading verse 24. It says, Strive to do what? To enter in at the straight gate. For many I say unto you, Will you seek to enter in? What happened? And shall not be able. And it says, strive. It's not something you just sit on the face and say, you're going to which heaven. Nobody goes to heaven like that. You seek him with all your heart. It says, strive to enter. Because many, many will decide to enter. Will try to enter. But the world, they shall not be able. Imagine where there is a football, uh, you know, in the national stadium. And everybody is forcing to enter. And then you come there and say, uh, I want to enter. And you are... You are on your face, I want to enter. The, what will happen that they will push you now? Are you hearing me? Because many people are, are struggling to do what? To enter. The Bible says many will strive to enter, but they shall not be able. And you that is a, you know, you that is saying, I want to enter, and you come late, can you go your way? How do you enter? Why well, many people are struggling to do what? To enter, and they will not be able. Those that struggle to enter, many will not be able. You're on wedding, you're on barrier, you're on your own. You don't come to worship God. And you want to enter. Enter now. Why many people are every day praying and coming and committed and consecrated and loving God and serving God with all their heart and desiring to enter. And here, may, may little thing will make them not to be what? Able. So, I want you to sit up. Heaven is not by chance. Do you hear me? You will seek me and find me. Of course, Jeremiah chapter 29. Let's see. Jeremiah chapter 29, I read from verse 12. Then shall you call upon me, and you shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. And you shall seek me and find me, when you shall search for me with all your heart. When you shall search for me with what? All your heart. If you are not searching with all your heart, forget heaven. Do what? Forget heaven. So, you need to search your life. For many people are serving two masters. And the Bible said, whoever you yield yourself servant to bear, you are a servant to that. According to the book of Romans chapter 6 and verse 16. Look at your Bible. Romans chapter 6 and verse 16. Know ye not that to whom you yield yourself servant to bear, a servant ye are to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death, or obedience unto righteousness. If you use yourself to the righteousness, you are the servant of righteousness. If you use yourself to sin, you are the servant of sin. And if you are a servant of sin, you are a servant of Satan. 
and because of him who serving the, the gods of this world. So, do something before it is too late. For now is an acceptable time. Tomorrow may be too late. That takes to point number two. The unfortunate situation and danger. Brethren, it is the last time. We are in the very end time. And the situation is getting worse and worse. Everybody is giving in to sin of idolatry. There is one thing or the other that has occupied the heart of people which serve as their gods. Do you hear me? I said, this last day, people, everybody is giving in to one sin or the other, one thing or the other, sin of idolatry. One thing that has taken their heart over their heart and which serve as their gods, as their master. I want to let you know, many people have given themselves over to the love of the flesh, pursuit of money, and material things. Many people have given themselves over to one thing or the other, selfishness, pride. They go to wedding, go to burial, go to all that, and go to all that, where they can be seen, where they can be praised. Those things are their gods. And the Bible says you cannot serve two masters. And because of these things, they miss fellowship with God. And because of these things, they are seduced. They are weak. They can't pray. They are not committed to the things of God. They are not serious again. Because these things have weakened and seduced them. Because of these things, these things we are talking about has terrible influence on them. It is very close to them. They are seeing it. And it is drawing them. And it is drawing them. And then they see the house of God, the things of God, as secondary. Are you like that? Something must be done before it is too late. If you look at the book of 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 10. 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 10. For Demas had forsaken me, having loved this present world. What took him away? Answer me. Love of the world. That's why he turned his back to the Apostle Paul and went on his own. Went his way. He loved the war. He loved their football. He loved their money making. He loved their barrier. He loved their, you know, their way. He loves the world and he has gone. The love of the world has done what? Taking him away. Are you like that? In the days of Apostle Paul, it was only one demon that did this thing that broke his heart. Whereas in our present day, we have many, 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 many uncountable what? Demons that are working on my heart and fighting my heart, breaking my heart. Are you hearing me? He lamented, he said, for demons have forsaken me. He was able to figure him out because there are not many. Now, how many demons do we have here? I don't know how, if Paul is to be here today, how he will be lamenting, whether he will be shouting, demons have forsaken me, or oh, oh, if he shouts. Because there are so many. And then they come as uh, people that should be honored for even coming at all. As if though they are doing anything. You know, they are doing it for God. They are doing it for somebody. They come, they come late. And then people, for people to praise them that have come. For Demas has forsaken me, having loved this present world. He has gone his own. Abandoned the work of God. Abandoned the service of God. Now, how many Demas... Does not come on Saturday. Answer me. How many demons that, that have gone to their business today, to the business Sunday? Demons. They are in their, they are in their, uh, they are in their heart-breaking number. Are you hearing me? Their numbers are not good to be mentioned. They are just coming to, as they come here and there, everybody come, I call, Pastor, pray for me. Pastor, I want to, in fact, my business is not working. Pray for me. That's why I come to church today. Pastor, pray for me because I'm sick. That's why I come to church today. Pastor, pray for me because, in fact, in my house, there's no peace. That's why I come to church today. Pastor, pray for me because I want to get sound. In fact, my body, I want, to be, I want it to be springing. Uh, uh, Pastor, pray for me. What they come to church is for one thing or the other. Nobody comes and says, I come to worship God. I come... Pastor, pray for me. I want to marry. That's why I come to church. Pastor, pray for me. I want to have children. Pastor, pray for me. I want to build a house. Pastor, pray for me. I want to, in fact, I want to travel overseas. I want to get visa. Pastor, pray for me. I want, uh, uh, you cannot serve God and uh, mammon. There are a lot of uh, uh, gods. 
evil that are they, you know, distracting you, deviating your attention from the true worship. Let me see people who say, I'm coming to worship God. I want to hear the word of God, prepare myself for heaven, serve God, to be with Him forever and ever. And there's such people, they come on Tuesday, they come on Thursday, they come on time, they come on Saturday, they come on Sunday, they come on time, they serve God, they worship God. That's what God's looking for. Those that are serving with all their hearts, in spirit and in truth. And when you're serving like that, you will see Him. So, we have so many demons in the church today. I don't know whether I will call it 10,000 demons or 20. You can give their number and yourself. Who are you? Praise the Lord. Now the question is, who are you? Forget that you are looking at my eyes and you are sitting down here. Who are you? Praise the Lord. The question is, who are you? Is this what it says? Then worship Him in spirit and in truth with all your heart. Sunday, you will be there on time. Saturday, you will be there on time. And Thursday, you will be there on time. And on Tuesday, you will be there on time. And house care fellowship, you will be there on time. And you are going there not for any, any condition. You are going there that today, I'm going to worship God. Are you following the point I'm making? And I must worship him. I must give him the first priority. I must be there on time. I must be there regularly. And I must make sure that today I will give him the praise. That today uh, he will be glorified. So, many people, many, have abandoned the love of God. The worship of God. True worship of God. And service unto God. The love of the world. Love of money and material things. No wonder the apostle warned. Apostle Paul warns to some, you know, many people who are having the same mind and who are having these last days. He said in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 19. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 19. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. That serving God in this, you know, is just for what to get in this life. Not for heaven's sake. He said we are of all men what? most miserable. I pray that it shall not be your portion. Let's watch him as God. Serve him in order to live with him forever and ever. If Paul the apostle, as I told you before, were to be in these last days, I do not know how he will be lamenting for so many demons that are now in the church, who are serving money, the world, have no business with God. He will be lamenting a lot. In fact, he will be weeping. He will be crying. He said, for demons have forsaken me, having loved this present world. And he told that our master Jesus Christ said in Matthew chapter 6. Let's go back to it. Verse 24. No man can serve two masters. For either he will inherit the one and love the other. Or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Therefore, I son to you, take note of your life, what you shall eat, and what with all you shall drink, nor yet for your body, what you shall put on, is not the life more than meat, and the body than ramen. I want to let you know, my brothers and sisters, don't worry about yourself. Are you hearing me? If you will serve God as God, He will take care of you. Is your father... If you, as a human being, can take care of your children, I want to ask you how much more God, abundant of love, abundant of mercy, abundant of compassion, of righteousness, how can He not take care of you? You take care of your little children. If truly you are, listen to me, you have made up your mind to watch, worship Him as God, and then leave the rest in the hand of God. Honestly, you can never regret it. Do you agree with me? I say never, never. Now, look at verse 26. Please, let's go to the Bible. Behold the fowls of the air. For they so not, neither do they live, nor gather into bands. If your heavenly Father feedeth them, are you not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? Look at that, what he says. The fowls of the earth, they don't have anywhere to sow, they don't have farm. But do God feed them? 
and Simon, the best of earth. Now, look at verse 28. Why take you thought for ramen? Consider the lively of the field, the flowers of the field, how they grow. They thought you not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed by one of these. All the riches of Solomon was not dressed like these flowers. God takes care of the flowers of the field. And it says, verse 30, Wherefore, if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Shall he not? He will clothe you. He will give you ramen, he will give you food, he will take care of you. Look at verse 31. Therefore, take no thought. Say, what shall we eat? Or where we thought shall we drink? Or, look at it, or where we thought shall we be clothed? For after all these things, do the Gentiles seek? Unbelievers are looking for these things. For you are heavenly Father, knowing that you have need of all these things. But seek it first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be what? And it will can God lie? Brethren, can God lie? He cannot lie. He will take care of you. Stop running up and down. Stop missing fellowship. Stop, you know, serving two masters. Stop giving yourself attention to the world. It will seduce you. It will destroy you. It will take you out of faith. And you miss heaven. What shall it profit you? Let's serve you as God with all our heart at all times. Let us not run the same rat race with the people of the world, with unbelievers. Let's serve God as God. He will take care of us. Are you hearing me? I say, my father and your father will take care of you. Stop worrying yourself. He knows you. He knows your needs. He knows what you are passing through. Anything that is not permitted, he will not allow it. Are you hearing me? He will take care of your head. He will take care of your future. He will take care of your family. He will take care of your children. I will take care of whatsoever you are looking for. God is equal to the task. Is the one that created heaven and earth. And I want to let you know the psalmist said, The earth is of the Lord, and the fullness thereof. And the psalmist that stopped him in time past said, The Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. If you are serving him, honestly, he will take care of you. Stop worrying, stop complaining, stop running up and down, stop missing fellowship. All that distraction you are allowing between you and your God, so that it shall be well with you. Are you hearing me? If you look at the book of uh, Exodus chapter 23, and from verse 25, I read verse 25, And you shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless thy bread and thy water, and I will take sickness away from the midst of thee, that shall nothing cast thy young, nor be barren in thy land. The number of thy days I will fulfill, I will send my fear before thee, and will destroy all the people to whom thou shalt come. And I will make all thy enemies turn their back unto thee. He will defend you. He will deliver you. He will take away sickness from you. He will take away barrenness from you. He will take away rising and falling. All those enemies are fighting you. He will take care of them. Are you hearing me? So, let's stop him. Jesus Christ said, I pleased him, and because of that, he has not left me. Now, let's read it before, before, before we begin to conclude now. In the book of John, chapter 8, I read verse 29. John's Gospel, chapter 8, verse 29. Look at your Bible. And he that sent me is with me. The Father has not left me alone, for I do always those things that please him. He did what? Always the thing that please God. Now, look at Matthew chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11. God was always with him because he was pleasing God. Matthew 11, 27. Chapter 11, verse 27. All things are delivered unto me of my Father. How many things? Oh, why? Because he does the thing that please God. God gave him what? All things. If we will serve God as God, you will never be in want of anything like the psalmist. Do you hear me? So stop missing fellowship, coming late. Stop all that, you know, excuses. Why you should not pray? Why you should not uh, worship God? You will not go for night visit? You will not come to the church on time? Stop those excuses. Serve God. As a servant as God, 
I'm assuring you he will bless you mightily in Jesus' name. So, as I begin to conclude, let us not serve God and mammon. Let's serve God as God. Let us remove every other condition that we are serving him. And that will not make him not to bless you. He will still bless you. It is his responsibility. I told you at the beginning that you are a car. Does he beg you to service him? No, you are the one that serves because you are using that car for your own good. You will service that car whenever it has problem. So when we serve God, he will service us. He will bless us in Jesus' name. So, for those who are not yet born again, number sliders, they should repent of their sins and they should give their life to Jesus Christ. And accept him as the Lord, as the personal Savior. Remember, the Bible says, in John chapter 3, verse 3. Please look at your Bible. Jesus answered and said unto him, Very, very, I son to thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Why? In Romans chapter 3, verse 23, For all have seen and fall short of the glory of God. How many? Now, shall we continue in saying that grace may abound? No, not at all. Are you hearing me? If you are among those people thinking that you remain in sin to enjoy the grace of God, it is not true. We must cease from sinning. In fact, look at Romans chapter 6, verse 1 and 2. He said, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer diary? So we must cease from sinning. Do you hear me? How does that happen and why? If you look at the book of Ezekiel chapter 18 verse 4. Ezekiel 18 verse 4. And stanza B says, The soul that sinneth it shall die. Any person that continues in sin shall be cut off, separated from God. And if he die in that condition, that person shall be cast into hell fire. The soul that sinneth it shall, it shall be cut off from God. Why? Look at the book of First. John chapter 3 verse 8. The Bible made us understand that a Christian is not a sinner and a sinner is not a Christian. First John chapter 3 verse 8. Is he that committed sin is of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Verse 9. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. For he still remained to him and he cannot sin because he is born of God. Now, listen to me, my sisters and brothers. He said, the soul that sinned shall do what? Die. Why? If the Bible says, he that committed sin belongs to who? The devil. When you continue in sin, then you are dead. You are separated from God. And automatically you belong to the devil. Now, that's what the Bible says in chapter 3 verse 9. He says, whosoever that is born of God does not commit sin. For the seed of God remained to him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. Now, what actually is sin? If you look at 1 John chapter 5 and verse 17, a, you will see what sin is all about. The Bible says, all unrighteousness is sin. Anything that is not righteousness is sin. I want to remind you, unbelief is sin. Unforgiveness is sin. Selfishness is sin. In need of such your life, anger, hatred, lying, disobedience, deceit, jealousy, strife, pride, contention, bitterness, keeping malice, bearing grudge, covetousness, all these things are terrible sins. Speaking evil of people, blasphemy, jesting, backbiting, all these things are terrible. Murmuring, you need to confess them and say, Lord, I'm sorry, no more. Cursing people, swearing with heaven and earth, worshiping idol, making idol, having anything like idol in your heart, another God. These things are terrible things. Going to native doctors to make sure or for divination, or maybe a native doctor that is evil. Gather those things among them, and if they have given you anything, I'm talking about these evil people, native doctors, and they're giving you anything, please burn it. Renounce it and confess it and say, Lord, you are sorry. I want to remind you, all those people that belong to secret court, open court, marine court, witchcraft court, campus court, local court, foreign court, I want to let you know 
all these things are terrible sin. Gather their property, bomb them, and surrender to Jesus. Make you a Lord, their personal savior. I don't know the wickedness you are into. Maybe you are a thief. You are stealing people's property, you pick pocket, or you are into one chance robbery, or you steal from your place you are working for your master, or you steal from your parents, or from your husband, or from your wife. If you are a thief, that is wickedness. That is sin. If you are an armed robber, my friend, that is wickedness. Or you are into one chance. I've told you before. Confess them and say, Lord, I am sorry. No more. Repent from the evil. I don't know the wickedness I enter. It could be that you are among those people. And I, you know, what you do is an internet fraud. Or you are a fraudster. You dupe people. You dupe governments. You dupe white people, black people. You are dupe. Confess these things and say, no more. I am sorry. I will do it no more. And if you are a thief, if you are a fraudster, and you brought money here to give us today, Please don't put your money in an offering bag. We don't need your money at all, at all. Return the money back to the owner. I mean, you are with. I don't know the wickedness I into. The unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Maybe you are into masturbation. You touch your body, and then you also go into fornication, adultery. That's wickedness. You must confess them to that and say no more. I don't know the wickedness. Maybe you patronize the prostitute. Or maybe you're a prostitute, private or public, you must repent to them. Or you commit abortion, that's wickedness. You must repent to them and say, Lord, I am sorry. I don't know the wickedness I'm into, maybe I'm into homosexual or lesbianism. These are gross wickedness. These are evil. You must not practice it. Are you a kidnapper? Are you a hired assassin, a killer? That's wickedness. Promise God no more. Are you a ritualist? Repent to them. Are you a terrorist? These are unrighteous. These are evil. Confess them and say, Lord, I am sorry. I don't know the wickedness I into all these people that are beating their wife and fighting their husband and disobedient to their parents and disobedient to their husband. Please repent and promise God no more. These are evil. Those that give bribe and take bribe and extort money from people because of their position, because of their uniform. They will show you their, you know, their fight comes to their table. They say they will not do this. They say they will give them money. Otherwise, their file will be seized. Or they show you gone on the on the road and say um, everything about your vehicle is bad until you give them money. Everything will become good. These are wickedness. Repent today and say, Lord, I am sorry. I don't know the evil you are into. Are you into smuggling? That is evil. Are you among those people that are working for people? You can't go to the workplace or work on time. You don't work for the company to grow. And to worsen it, you writing, you, you will, you know, there you are writing the time you came, you wrote the wrong time. When you came by 10, you wrote, you came by 8 because the owner of the company is not there. And before the month ends, you are collecting salary. You a thief. You must repent to them and say, Lord, I am sorry. Are they working for you? You don't pay them? Oh, you have to pay them because that's an agreement, that's a contract. You must not break it. That's a covenant. I mean, you are waste. I don't know the wickedness I into of these people that, you know, they take snuff, they smoke cigarettes, and they take Indian hemp or cooking or heroin, or they're buying it or they're selling it. These are evil. You must repent and promise God no more. And as many of you that are taking alcoholic drinks, white mimbo, brukutu, local gin, beer, one percent or half percent, whether you are working in blue, you are buying it, you are selling it, you must repent to and close that thing so you can make heaven. All unrighteousness is sin. I don't know the evil you are into. All those that marry and divorce. All those that are into polygamous marriage, they have three wives, and their second wife or third wife or fourth wife, or they marry and divorce. Let me tell you, marriage is between a man and a woman. Marriage is for better, for worse. And until the day, they do your part. And if you have left your wife, send away your wife, when death has not separated you, your first wife, you must bring her back. And if you run away from your husband, when death has not separated you, you must return back to your husband. I mean, you are away. And if your second wife or third wife or fourth wife, as you are hearing me, you are going to pack your load and go back home. You have no husband. You are committing adultery. And if a man that married them three, four, you must remove the second and third and fourth one. And I mean, you are away so you can make heaven at last. 
Let's see the Bible in Matthew chapter 19. I read from verse 4. Matthew chapter 19. Matthew chapter 19. Let's read from verse 4. And he answered and said unto them, Have you not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? Not a man and a man. Not homosexual. Lesbian. That's wickedness. A man and a woman. That's the ordination of God. Marriage is between a man and what? Not even a baby, a baby and a baby. Not even a youth. A man and a woman. Are you hearing me? Now, if you go to verse 4, I mean verse 5, and said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother, and shall cleave to his wife, and they two shall be one flesh. Wherefore, there are no more twain but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let no man put asunder. What God has joined together, let nobody separate it. Did you hear me? Marriage is until it is do your part. And if I made a mistake, please correct before it is too late. I don't know the evil you are into. The unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Repent now. Now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. As you hear this word, harden not their heart. As in the day of provocation, when they provoked God in the wilderness, and he killed 20 something thousand in one day, don't provoke God anymore. Repent, and I mean you are waste. I want to remind you. My brothers and sisters who are here, if you are among those people that are bleaching your body and becoming yellow overnight, whether you are a man or a woman, that is evil. Or you paint your hands and paint your mouth and paint your eyes and paint your leg, that is evil. Or you put attachment, an extra finger, extra teeth, extra eye, and then attachment and weave on and palming, or earrings, or jewelry, or bango. You don't need them at all, at all. In verse Psalm 139 and verse 14 says, God has fearfully and wonderfully made you and my fellows are the works of God. You don't need addition. And in fact, if you look at the Bible in Jeremiah chapter 4 verse 30, the Bible says, when they ask for it, what shall they do? They will go after painting, after ornament. Whenever a woman has for it, begin to make up. Are you making up as a spoiled person? That is evil. That's abomination. Are you among those women that sew your dresses in order to seduce men or men that try to expose your nakedness? You must cover your body properly well. Cover your labs, cover your tummy, cover your chest, cover your armpits, cover your body properly well. A Christian is not a seducer, and a seducer is not a Christian. And mend their ways. Tomorrow may be too late. I don't know the evil you are into. If you're a young man that is being Jericho, rough hair, scattered hair, you play her like a woman, a man. That is abomination. Are you a woman wearing trousers, dressing like a man? Are you a man wearing skirt and blouse, dressed like a woman? It's abomination. Look at the Bible. In Deuteronomy 22, verse 5. Deuteronomy chapter 22, I read verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertains unto a man. Neither shall a man put on woman's garment. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. Those that are doing such things are what? Abomination. And the Bible says concerning abominable people in the book of uh, Revelation 21 verse 8. Please open your Bible. Revelation 21 verse 8. But the fearful and unbelieving and abominable, take note of that, abominable, and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers, and idolaters and all liars shall have their parts in the lake which born with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Abominable people shall be cast into hell fire. Amen. You are ways. Look at verse 27. And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination, or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the last book of life. Abominable cannot enter. The five people cannot enter. Amend their ways. Their portion is hell fire. Amend their way. Repent. Turn away from abominable life. And then surrender to Jesus. Make you a Lord their personal savior. For the Bible said in the book of Exodus, chapter 12, verse 13, it said, When I see the blood, I will pass over you. That blood has been shed. That place was spoken in a symbolic figure of the real blood to come. Because the Bible said in Hebrews chapter 9 verse 22, without the shedding of blood, there shall be no remission of sin. And if you want your sin to be washed away, 
is not going to be the blood of animal. It is going to be the blood of Jesus Christ. Please turn your Bible to John chapter 1. I read verse 29. John chapter 1 and verse 29. The next day, John sees Jesus coming unto him and say, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Who is that Lamb? Jesus Christ. That's the only one through his blood. Our sins shall be washed away. If you look at your Bible in John chapter 3 verse 16, it says, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in it will not perish, but have everlasting life. And no wonder, in John chapter 19 verse 30, when Jesus shared his blood, he said, It is finished. The end of all sacrifices for sin, he said, It is all over. And he said in the book of John chapter 14 verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. There is no other way. He is the only way. Through him, we have access to God. By the means of his blood. Our reconciliation with God. That's what Jesus said. In the book of John chapter 10 verse 10b, I come that I might have life. I have it more abundantly. And if you look at chapter 8, verse 36, he said, If the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. And in Matthew chapter 11, 28, Jesus said, Come unto me, all you that labor and heavy landed, and I will give you rest. That's the only one that has power to cleanse us, to wash us by his precious blood. And we'll become a new creature. And our life will change. Listen to me. If you look at the book of John chapter 1 verse 12, please open your Bible. Let's read this. John's Gospel chapter 1 verse 12. He says, But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. As many as received who? What power did they receive? Power of sonship. When that power is not in you, no matter how religious, I want to let you know you cannot enter heaven, you cannot be called a child of God. Our salvation comes through Jesus Christ. And when, once you receive Jesus, there shall be transformation. There shall be newness of life. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Look at the Bible. Therefore, Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. If any man be in who? Answer me. In Christ is a new creature. All things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. No wonder the Bible says, by their fruit, you shall know them. Once you are born again, you have the newness of life. You will be a fruit of righteousness. Salvation, uh, assurance or confirmation of those who are Christian, is not by revelation and vision. It's said by their fruit, what happened? You shall know them. And so, as many of you that are here today, all I want to plead with you, give your life to Jesus. You shall have the newness of life. And the grace for righteousness shall be given unto you. The apostle said, by the grace of God, I am what I am. And I can do all things through Christ that strengthened me. How many things? I can live holy life through who? I can please God through who? I can serve God alone through who? Jesus Christ. And so, what we need to do now, search your life, and then convict yourself, acknowledge your sins, and repent, confess them, and say, Lord, I am sorry. For the book of Proverbs 28, verse 13, said, He that covereth his sin shall not prosper. But whoso that confess them and forsake them shall have mercy. Do you want to have mercy? Acknowledge your sins. Repent of them. Promise God no more. And call upon the Lord. Today, salvation shall be yours. And serve him alone. You shall not serve God and mammon. In Romans chapter 10 verse 13. Romans chapter 10 verse 13. And he said, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Are you ready to be saved? Rise up on your feet. And then call upon the Lord in repentance. And surrender to Jesus, salvation shall be yours. Pray. Call upon God, search your life, and mend your ways. Surrender to Jesus, make your Lord your personal Savior. Search your life, make an amendment today. Everybody pray. Everybody, everybody. Let's pray, let's sincerely pray. You cannot serve God 
a mammon. You cannot serve two masters. Choose you who you will serve today and serve him with all your heart. If you are made up to serve God, serve him as God. Give him attention with all your heart. Search your life and mean your ways. Everybody pray, everybody pray. Heavenly Father, I pray that have mercy upon us. Forgive and cleanse us of every known and unknown sin. We are sorry, O Lord, for every unrighteous thought or ways or action or disposition whatsoever we are done against you. are going to your name. For as for mercy, O God, for mercy rejoices over judgment. We we'll pray for the salvation of every soul that is here. I am sorry, Lord. I am sorry, Lord. Father, I am sorry, Lord. Oh, Lord, I am sorry, Lord. I am sorry, Lord. Jehovah, Father, oh, Lord, I'm sorry, Lord. Sorry, Lord. Jehovah, oh, Lord, and one more time. Sorry, Lord, Jehovah, oh, Lord, eyes closed everywhere, eyes closed and head bowed. That person that is coming to church today for the first time and you are still wearing charms in your body, can you raise your hand up? I ask God to forgive you. And you are going to throw that in the way because there is no power there. Just keep your hands off the person I'm talking about. Eyes closed. I want to pray for you. God bless you. I can see your hands there. God bless you. God bless you. Eyes closed everywhere. Can you wave that hand so I can see it very well? Wave it. God bless you. Now, eyes closed and head bowed. Now, I want to pray for this person. You have been living in the sin of adultery and God is not happy with you. Can you raise your hand up? I want to break the yoke today so you can be free. Eyes closed. Don't look around. Just look up onto heaven. Any that is smoking and drinking, can you keep your hands up? I want to pray for you. Eyes closed and head bow. And you that belong to secret courts, can you keep your hands up? I'm breaking the yoke. I pray for you. The Lord will change your life. Eyes closed and head bow. That person involved in masturbation, keep your hands up. I want to pray for you. All of you that are involved in committing fornication and even those that are patronizing the, you know, patronizing the prostitute, keep your hands up and breaking the yoke. You that have unforgiving hearts, keep your hands up and pray for you. That person taking that terrible evil called Indian hand. Can you keep your hands up and breaking the yoke for you? Eyes closed and head bow. All of you that are involved into fighting and quarreling, and even going to native doctors, keep your hands up and praying for you. Eyes closed and head bowed. Eyes closed and praying for you. Now, if you are there right now, you want to give your life to Jesus today, keep your hands up. Whether I mention your case or not, keep your hands up. I want to pray for you. Now, I want you to say this word after me. Almighty God. I come before you in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I confess that I am a sinner. I am very sorry for all my sins. Lord, I promise you, I will never continue my sins anymore. From today, I confess and I believe that Jesus Christ died for me. He shed his precious blood for me and he was buried. And on the third day, he rose again for my justification. Almighty God, use the blood of Jesus Christ. Wash my sins away from my heart. I plead the blood of Jesus. Jesus Christ, come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my personal Savior. Cancel my name in the book of death. 
write my name in the book of life. Give me power to sin no more. In Jesus' name I pray. So I'll keep your two hands up. A young man that is into arm robbery, join them to keep your hands up. Everybody that is there and um, you have not given your life to Jesus, keep your hands up and pray for you. Sing this song. I surrender. I surrender. Oh, to Jesus, blessed Savior, I surrender, I surrender, sing it again, surrender, I surrender, I surrender. I surrender all to Jesus, blessed Savior. I surrender, I surrender all. Keep your hand up and pray. The merciful Father, the compassionate God, it is never your will that any of these souls should perish. Whatsoever they have done against you, against humanity, known and unknown to them, in your wrath, remember mercy. Because mercy rejoices over judgment. Whatever judgment passed on them, by your mercy they be cancelled. Every yoke of power that makes them to do evil, by your authority, I break the yoke of sin in Jesus' name. And I break the yoke of that power. I claim their spirit, their soul, their body for Jesus. For I cancel their name in the book of death. Write their name in the book of life. Give them power to sin no more in Jesus' name. Can I hear you say amen? Say it again. And it is amen in heaven. Place your hand on your chest, eyes closed, and head bowed. The young man that has been into this case of diabetes for a long time, can you keep your hands up? I cancel the diabetes for you. And I pray that you be healed in Jesus' name. Bring down your hands to your head. Now the person that is having heart problem, can you raise your hand up? Now receive a new heart in Jesus' name. Everything that the enemy has damaged in that heart, I command it to be replaced. That person having internal hotness for the body and moving objects, I cancel, I cause that to be free in Jesus' name. The one that has terrible stomach problem, I cancel the stomach problem. I pray be healed in Jesus' name. The one that has asthmatic cough, can you raise your hand up? I pray the power be healed in Jesus' name. That terrible cough that somebody is having, I cancel that cough. Be free. I say be free in Jesus' name. That person that you have, your leg has been hurting you where you are marching on the ground, I cut that hotness in the leg. I command that it will disappear in Jesus' name. The one that much poison, I cut the poison. And I command the poison to disappear in Jesus' name. The typhoid, fever, malaria, parasite, I cancel it for you. I command that that be removed from your body in Jesus' name. That fibroid, I command that thing to wither, to shrink and come out of your body in Jesus' name. All of you that have been having staphylococcus, just keep your hands up. I cancel staphylococcus for you. I cause that thing, I command it to dry up in Jesus' name. And I pray for you, you have done so many things to make it a life, and nothing is working. Today, mark this hour. That yoke is broken. 
that person that has sat on your employment. I give you three days, go and take employment. The one that has flitted with HIV, in the name of Jesus, I cancel the HIV. And I declare you free from HIV in Jesus' name. Go to the first, the first place the test tells you. To the last place the test tells you. Go and do the test. You are free. It is negative. Daddy, every delay in marriage, I pray the yoke to them. Let the yoke be broken in Jesus' name. And the strange woman in that you are married, I command the strange one to be uprooted. Lord, intervene in Jesus' name. Daddy, who can battle with the Lord? That broken marriage, I command to join together in Jesus' name. Daddy, touch my people one by one. I pass a decree. The Kappa Sukataya. Genova Kaskin de Lia Capre. Zona Askin de Lima Rus Genia. Holy Ghost. Before I say the final Amen, oh yeah, touch them one by one. Give me a sign. One by one, one by one, one by one, from my front, one by one, to the back. Let there is a divine touch, definite touch, divine touch, definite touch, touch of power, touch of healing, touch of blessings, touch of miracle, touch of favor. Touch their marriage, touch their family, touch their wife, touch their husband, touch their children, touch. Authoritatively, I declare favor. Financial favor. Financial favor. Financial favor. In the name of Jesus. And it is a man in heaven.